Hi, I'm Sanera Madani, and I'm a mom of two, a daughter of an immigrant and an unlikely entrepreneur who went from scaling an idea to a billion dollar business. Yes, a billion dollar business. Along the way, I learned that less than 2% of female founders ever hit 1 million in revenue. And I became obsessed on a mission to change that. I believe that there is so much gatekeeping in business knowledge and that we as female entrepreneurs should be learning from other female founders and leaders who have broken the statistics. Since I never went to CEO school, I've had to learn it all the hard way, but you shouldn't have to because we believe that you deserve to have it all. And honestly, nothing bad happens when women make more money. Grab a seat because class is officially in session. Welcome to CEO School. Welcome to CEO School, everyone. For today's episode of Wind Down Wednesday, we're already all sitting here laughing in the studio because we were talking about money mindset and women. This was this is how Wind Down Wednesdays are formed. By the way, it's behind the scenes of what it takes to run a successful business, be a woman doing it, not be a fucking man in a skirt, deal with all the bullshit, all of the things, and we bring it real, we bring it live every single week. So you have, uh, you know, not just a mentor, but a friend by your side um, that's going through the same shit you are. And I tell you, like, literally one of the things, like, my biggest lessons in entrepreneurship, it's like everyone wants to ask my biggest lessons in entrepreneurship, um, and I think I'm calling it entrepreneur shit uh, because that's what it actually feels like all the time. But my biggest like takeaway is that it just doesn't get easier. You just learn to deal with it better, honestly. You just learn to deal with shit better and you learn – it's not about confidence. People are like, how are you so confident? And honestly, I didn't naturally have confidence. I – had amazing parents that would always instill confidence in me, that they always told me that I was um, amazing and that I could do anything. And I had like really awesome, like the opposite of like what I hear about entrepreneur parents. And um, so I had amazing parents that like gave me so much love and overconfidence, but I honestly got my confidence from them versus from myself. So I grew up opposite that I had to be like told I was good. So definitely my love language is words of affirmation and I need to be told that I'm doing a good job, that I'm, you know, doing it right or I need the A+. Plus. So that's kind of and I think a lot of immigrant kids go through that. But we were talking about women in particular and uh uh, I'm not going to say who, uh, but one of uh, the women at CEO school, uh, she had come to our office and um, she has an incredible merch line. And, um, you know, she, I gave her the opportunity to pitch to our CMO and to get the contract for boxes and for merch and to like other things that we need to utilize for new clients and onboarding and whatever. And I'm watching her in this meeting. And mind you, she's gone through CO school. She's one of our boardroom members, like all the things. Like she shows up. She's fucking awesome. Her business is awesome. She does not have any sort of like confidence issues, business, business issues, none of that. No imposter syndrome or what we think right from the outside. And I see her pitch and I'm watching this happen. And she's literally like, negotiating herself out of the deal. Like her, she's like discounting herself. I haven't even heard my CMO ask for price yet. I haven't even asked, seen him um, say he's going with another vendor or even show any signs of like hesitations. Like he's literally just listening and there might be some silence in the room. And I see her take that silence and what happens in silence, right? What happens here in silence? our mind starts to talk. And we as women, the thing that we do the worst at, which honestly our greatest weakness should become our greatest strength, right? The thing that we do worst is we listen to that negative self-talk. So I wasn't in her head, but I could tell you exactly what was going on. And because there was like some pauses and whatever it was, she was filling that silence, right? with that negative talk on her shoulder saying, I'm not good enough or my product isn't good enough and they're not going to buy. And so I need to go into the scarcity bu mindset bu bucket and I'm already going to talk about discounting and I'm already going to talk about all the things I'm giving away and I'm going to over promise, right? Because I'm going to do the delivery like next day and I'm going to, no one's even asked for anything. But that silence ends up being our critic, right? And that's the voice that we listen to. 
And so uh, we were laughing earlier because we were talking about women and money mindset. And I brought up that story uh, with her. And she was like, you have to talk about that on today's episode because it is a mindset thing. And our biggest weakness which is the negative talk that we do as women, the imposter syndrome, the lack of confidence, all the things that, you know, I'm so tired of reading about, okay? We have to take action and turn that weakness actually into our greatest strength. So if our mindset and our, our, like the voice that we listen to is our weakness, how can we use that voice to champion us, us instead? And honestly, when you take a look at like the man's world, right, which is all of it, right? They, I don't even know what's going on in their heads, right? Nothing. Like they're just going. They don't listen to this negative voice. They actually have the opposite. They have like an overconfident voice, right? That's just like, they, they think that they can do things even though they're not qualified to do so. And I see this happen every single day, everywhere. One, we have hundreds of women through CEO school that I get to like see and it happened in real time in front of me, right? And then even within my own company, I have 400 team members, more than half of which are women. And I see the women just discount themselves, not use their voices. And then after a meeting say, oh, I really wanted to like say that, or, oh, like that was my, like literally I see men take women's ideas like right in front of them. And then it becomes their project. And like, what just happened in this room? Right. And this happens all the time. And so how can we use that voice to champion us. And so I don't think that that critic ever goes away, right? So it's not like uh, people are like, how do you have that confidence? Or what do you do to deal with imposter syndrome? I'm so tired of hearing the word imposter syndrome. Uh, We're all air quotes an imposter. Like that's such a harsh word. Like imposter itself is such a harsh word. I don't want to be an imposter, right? Maybe I don't feel worthy enough or good enough, or I have doubt and self-doubt but I don't feel like an imposter. Like I'm not a liar. Right. So let's like not use, I don't know. I don't, I don't love it. Um, and if you don't love it either, tag me on Instagram right now and tell me like, say we're saying like, like we're not doing imposter syndrome. I was going to swear here, but say fuck imposter syndrome. So feel free to tag me there. Um, but we're going to fuck imposter syndrome. We're not going to use that. Um, we might not have the, we might have a lot of doubt. We might have a critic. And so, just like that movie Inside Out, I really think I love that movie so much. I don't know if anyone's a fan or has children or not, but we've seen the movie Inside Out and it has like all the little characters inside of the brain. And you have the different voices. You've got the angry one. You've got the joy one. You've got like the grumpy, sad one. Like you've got the, the different, you've got fear. And so all of these voices do exist. It depends on who takes the microphone, right? And so we have to learn to give the champion the voice. And the way that I, like three tips, right? Like we're we're starting this episode on how do we go from that scarcity to that abundance mindset to screw that imposter syndrome, to have that right uh, power, to step into our power. The first thing that we have to do is do a lot of unlearning, right? So we have to go back and say whatever we were told about money, whatever we were told about from our, I definitely struggle with this as an immigrant kid. And you might, you don't have to be an immigrant kid to like struggle with it. Um, Many cultures, like we all face shame around money, asking for money, talking about money. And here, that is why I always say it's hard. It was hard for me to even make this our tagline, but it is nothing bad happens when women make more money. You have to unlearn and do a lot of unlearning and we could probably fill another episode on unlearning on money mindset. If you do want that, let me know in my DMs and we will get that episode out for you soon. Uh, But first it's unlearning. And then um, second, honestly, it's just getting out of your own way. Like what she did in that room was get in her own way. So it was not just like the mindset that was happening. And then it comes out (laughs) and then she's negotiating against herself, right? You have to get out of your own way and listen. And as women, we all know we do we do the talking, right? I think there's like what are the statistics like women you know speak like 40 times the amount of words per day as an average man. So we do do a lot of talking. But when it comes to being in the room, there's two parts to it. When you're negotiating, listening is key. Right? Cuz you want to pay attention and not just be like 
be thoughtful about your words so you're not tripping over or listening to what are they actually asking for and having those cues, right? So get out of your own way and listen so that you can negotiate effectively, right? And you're probably, you might not even need a negotiation. And so it's important for you to feel confident in asking for your worth is like the next part of it, right? So unlearning, getting out of your way and understanding your worth. Because as women, the reason why we do all the things at the end of the day, like the principal feeling is unworthiness, right? Like that's the deep, the the thing that we all have to fix in therapy and in the coming to this podcast and doing the work and all the inner work. It's the unworthiness. But you have to believe truly that you are worthy, that your product is worthy, that your success is worthy, that your service is worthy, that your price point is worthy. And if you don't believe that, if there isn't alignment in from belief to the truth, then you're never going to get there. And in how do you feel that worthiness is to spend time there, right? Is to practice and create tools around you to believe that worthiness. And tools are, for me, is I journal, right? I have my planner every day. I have my CEO school planner. I'll link it into the show notes. And there's like simple prompts in here. And I literally just journal and I write my three affirmations. And it's something so basic, but I always write in my affirmation, I am worthy right? I am worthy. And whatever that feeling I need to have for the day, that is what I write. I am powerful. I will close that sale. I will go land a million dollar contract. I am able, am, you're willing your way there, right? That's a huge part about entrepreneurship. And so practice is also how you're going to get there. So unlearning, getting out of your own way and practicing to really feel alignment in your worth is that success. And I want to tell you, it's not, you're not alone for feeling all of that. Let's now just be aware of that feeling so that we can work on it. This is something we all work through. Every single level that I've gotten to in my career, in my success, I've had to almost like start from scratch in that new setting, right? So I I come into a space and I'm able to like come in, dominate that space or like find success in that. But then the bar raises and I have like a new level of success. And then I have all those feelings, all of that thing comes back up in that next part of the journey. So all of this is a journey. And if you keep that in mind and embrace that and put these tools together to practice, to do your affirmations, whatever that looks like for you, it doesn't have to be my woo-woo way, but you have to find a way to believe that worthiness and put it into practice And know that it's okay that we're going to fall off of it, but we get back on that it is a practice. And that even for women like me, like I still have those feelings that show up every single time. Like literally last week, there was an article and um, my ping, like my my team, my ping, my team pinged me. And it was like another organic piece by Inc. And it's, I I just, I love you, Inc. You guys are the kindest to me. And Inc. had a piece on advice from four successful moguls, CEOs, and billionaires. Okay. So um, I was a CEO, not the mogul or the billionaire. (laughs) Um, And it was Oprah. Okay. Literally, it was Oprah, Dolly Parton, Melinda Gates, and Sanira Madani. Okay. That, first of all, when I like opened my phone, my heart was like through like my, like outside of my, like, outside of my body. Like it was like my heart was racing. I was like literally about to have an anxiety attack trying to read through the article as like fast as possible. I wanted to know what they said. I wanted to know what it was. And then just seeing my face on a screenshot, like literally that was the image. Um, And seeing my face amongst that level of success or the women that like I I think about as like the highest of the highest in their moguls, right? Like these are the moguls. And my name was there. And the advice um, like that the uh, that was that thread on the article was to be your most authentic self as a woman and like in the in a man's role, just like to be you. That was at the end of the day, the advice. I'll link the article. It was a beautiful, beautiful article. It was definitely one of the biggest highlights of my career, um, that article. But in that moment, even that feeling back again of like, I'm still again going through that next cycle of like, oh my God, like my name was in there. I don't even, I do not belong in that category. And you learn to unlearn and to go through this process. And um, I just wanted to share that it's, it is a journey. 
And that's what like your mindset is and all of this work and this inner work and the growth work that we do is so critical. And you just showing up here, right? And just getting that like weekly dose of inspiration and having this heart to heart with me. Like this is, I feel like this is business and life therapy, right? Like this is what we need um, more of in the world. And so fill your feeds with things that remind you. Put that journal on your desk um, that gets you to write that affirmation. Take the time uh, to, you know, to book the, you know, uh, to show up for a class, like show up for CEO school or book the therapy or, um, and take the time to like listen to yourself and to your audience so that you're not negotiating your against yourself. You are inserting yourself also in the right areas to advocate for yourself. Your voice still is the most important, right? So it's not all the words, it's the right words that matter and unlearning all the things that we've been taught honestly to learn as women and this is how we're going to make space because honestly remind yourself what's the worst that's going to happen right nothing bad happens when what right when women make more money nothing bad happens when you are worthy nothing bad happens when you have that confidence nothing bad happens when you achieve your dreams when you reach that level of success nothing bad happens only good happens and you have to fund- fundamentally believe that and that is what i believe here at ceo school and i'm so grateful for all of you and for today and this is just one little way uh to fuck the imposter syndrome i hope you enjoyed today's episode if you did screenshot this episode tag me on instagram share it with your friends and please 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 leave us a review this is how we grow as well and so i'm forever grateful for all of you listening every single week i hope you enjoyed your wednesday today i will see you next week at ceo school thank you for tuning into today's show if you loved it leave us a review We are so proud to bring you authentic conversations, game changer expert guests, and valuable content on and offline. The best compliment you can give us is by screenshotting today's show and tagging us on Instagram at CEO School and at Sanira Madani. We are obsessed with swag, so don't be surprised if we want to send you some. Thanks for tuning into class today. And remember, nothing bad happens when women make more money.